and here we are for part two of the Funtime Gazelle for new features. The next feature that they've added is a new alignment function. Uh, I'll just start a new document. And the new alignment function works by if I draw a square, and again I'm going to work in wireframe because you know that it's easier to see. And I'm going to draw a circle. Now the new alignment function works like this. If I highlight both of them and go up to my justification menu, you'll notice that there are two new functions, and that is this one and this one. Okay, and this is what happens. If I move this circle to one side, okay, and then highlight both of them. When I click on align to the top of the page, it brings the whole lot to the top of the page. And obviously, conversely, it aligns with the bottom of the page. This is a really helpful function when you're trying to line up things. Uh, if you're a card maker and you want everything to be sitting at the bottom, um, it's a really great way of uh, getting your elements to all line up perfectly. So that's another great function. Now the next one, and I'm sure this will help um, a lot, is project notes. Now when we make a project and we intend sharing it or we need to remind ourselves of things, historically we've had to type it onto the page, convert it to an image so that we don't accidentally cut it. And all in all it was a bit of a bugbear. But now you can write project notes uh, in this box by simply going to view and clicking on project notes and in here you can write things like the font name you might want to put copyright information you may want to put um, notes like uh, you will need three of the circles and so on and so forth and whoever you share the file with or even for yourself that you can remind yourself uh, any odd behaviour or any odd things about this file or just elements that you might need, need to cut more of uh, and so on and so forth. So again, a great function or feature. A few of you that um, have done a couple of updates in the past have then emailed me saying, I've got this grid on my page and I can't get rid of it. Um, Originally they put this in and I said no I don't like this at all so they made it that you could put it in or out okay so there it is there and quite often um, I think the latest update included it, included it and some find it quite useful because the, they're in one inch increments which match, matches your mats but I find it a bit distracting so at least now you can turn it on or off by clicking on view and cutting mats. Calligraphy. It's not something I use a great deal, but now that we've got a couple of new features I may. Over here in the freehand uh, menu, we'll click on that, we have two new line types or calligraphy lines. And basically it's like a macro where it attempts to take out all of the joining nodes. So if I attempted to write my name, you can see that we have a, a flat surface and a thin surface, sim uh, similar to writing with a um, fountain pen. Of course, remember when you look at it in wireframe, if you did try to cut it, it would only cut that single line. But it's ideal if you're wanting to print, uh, print it. The second calligraphy is virtually the same, but it just has a slightly different um, nib on the end of it. Again, is it something we'll use? I don't know. Uh, time will tell. I haven't used it in the past, but that's not to say I won't use it now. Now, multi-pass. Oh, I've still got the font. Okay. If you wanted to draw yourself a shape and then go to cut craft and did passes and clicked on two, you would find that your gazelle will start the first pass, go round, back to the start again, and then the blade holder would lift up for a split second and then go down again and cut the second pass. Now with this new multi-pass, your gazelle will cut once and continue cutting to the second pass, through the second pass. 
um, which is a great feature because sometimes when it lifts up and lifts down, you can get just the, the slightest difference of position, but this will eliminate that and get a much cleaner cut. You can also do a multi-pass on an open-ended line. I'll just do one for you. Now, Terry Mao has, uh, I've been just speaking with her, and she did mention that if you do multi-pass on a single line, if I click on it and click two, if you do more than two, it does tend to get a bit upset about it. I'm not so sure why, but it does. So just keep that in mind that you can do as many multi-passes on a, a sealed or a, um, a closed uh, element. But if you're going to do multi-pass on uh, an open-ended element or a, a floating line, etc., you may want to just keep the passes to two. Okay, now... This is something that I'm not sure all of you have seen or even thought about, but because you can use digital images, in the past, if we opened or imported a digital image, i.e. a PNG, you got, I've, I've just, sorry, by the way, I've just opened up the old, my fun time, which is the previous version. Anything, uh, PNGs historically have a shadow on them, and fun time, had difficulty interpreting what that shadow was so you got this effect which is really not what you wanted so basically what you had to do is get your PNG convert it to a JPEG then import it. Now in Gazelle when I import a PNG uh, we'll just go down to I've just got to remember which one it was this was it here. Same file. When I import it now, you can see it imports without um, the shadow sitting behind it. So you can see the difference. There's one and there's the other. So you can see that that's a huge improvement on how it was behaving before. Now, again, I've come nearly to the end of um, my time allotment for YouTube. So we'll close this uh, video down and we'll start up with part three shortly. See you soon.